Barak at the Yehawah, Barak at the Yehawah Shai. As always, all praises, honor, and glory be unto our Heavenly Father, whose name is Yehawah, and the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Yehawah Shai, and the Rakai Kodash, which is the Holy Spirit, giving double honors to our apostles, our elders, our leaders of the Church of Great Millstone that taught us this truth. Shalom, peace and love be unto you, Akim, that are laboring to push this truth. Are you prophets and teachers? And Shalom be unto the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. I'm not sure exactly, you know, how long this video is going to be, but I did want to touch on, you know, um, the color, you know, of the true Israelites. You know, right now, you know, they're variegated. You know, they're different colors because they've been cast into, you know, the four corners of the earth, you know, have been there for a while and have had children, you know, with the daughters, you know, of these various different nations, you know, and have also took on, you know, in some aspects, you know, their ideologies, their belief, you know, their language. But a lot of them are being brought back into the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you know, through this gospel being preached, uh, through the words of the scriptures, all right, and the testimony of Yahweh Shah. You know, they're repenting and they're turning back unto, you know, this true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and acknowledging, you know, that they are the true Israelites and are descendants, you know, of the Israelites, you know, no matter what they look like. You know, it's not a color thing with us. You know, the apostles have been mentioning how uh, Nate is uh, identifying as the black Hebrew Israelites. We're not the black Hebrew Israelites. Uh, we are just simply Hebrew Israelites. And Hebrew Israelites come in all shapes, colors, and sizes. Now, there was a time, though, when predominantly, you know, our people had one look. You know, and that's when you go back before, you know, the split, you know, and back before the various different captivities that we were driven into, you know, our people were on the darker complected side of things. And going even up into the time of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, you had some Israelites uh, being Hellenized, all right, or being amongst you know, different countries, you know, they would be on the lighter complexion, but majority of them were of a darker tone. You know, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, was a dark-skinned man, according to the testimony of the scriptures. And this is how we know that all of you that are out there that claim to be Christians, but you think that the Lord was a so-called white man, or you just die hard for him being white, really is because you're racist all right you're racist you know and that's just the truth of the matter you know it is what it is you know it is what it is and you know you have been in the mind state that so-called negroes latinos and native americans there's a box that they're putting in and basically they can't leave that box and if they ever, you know, were to drift outside of that box, basically, you have the mind of, okay, this is your space, go back in it. All right, you hate the idea of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans being superior. You hate that idea. You hate the concept, you hate the idea of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans being superior, all right, or being the Heavenly Father's chosen people. All right, which proves what at the end of the day, all right, because as long as the characters in the Bible are so-called white men and women, you know, that that is okay, that's acceptable. The world has to accept that. All right? Because that puts you in a position of being superior 
or the Heavenly Father's chosen people. But as soon as the truth is brought out, which shows what the true Israelites look like, then it's a problem. All right, because we've disrupted your paradigm. All right, you have been comfortable with the idea of being the chosen people, but now that lie is being knocked down or knocked to the side. All right, you can't fathom that. You can't fathom that this people, all right, that are supposed to be in this box is leaving this box. And that, and that box is basically all of the things that you have told us that we're are. All right, that infamy. Okay, that 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 negative um reputation. The byword's and the proverbs. But it's okay. All right, because at the end of the day, the day got to end. But anyways, uh <laughs> just being a little, you know, jokey, you know, with that one. The book of Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, verse 3, it says, Therefore prophesy and say, Thus said Yahweh power, Behold, they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye may be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. And ye are taken in the lips of talkers and are the infamy of the people. And when you look into that word for infamy, the word infamy is going into having a bad rep, you know, having a, a uh, uh, you know, people having negative things to say about you. All right. A negative opinion. Which I intend to grab the Hebrew word for infamy. You have something in the uh roman empire called infamia you know infamia so someone would have you know a bad reputation you know be a bad uh uh they they would have the the reputation of being a slave you know now they could they could be let's say for instance they could be a um they could be a a, a floyd mayweather you know, they could be a LeBron James, but however, they're still a slave. So although they're able, they have su uh, success, you know, they have particular fame, you know, they're still a slave at the end of the day. So they can socialize amongst, you know, a certain class of people, but they're still slaves and they can be used for whatever, you know, the, the rich you know, or the elites of that age wanted to use them for. Now, the word for infamy in the scriptures is the ba, and it says a whisper, defamation, evil report, you know, unfavorable saying, slander, um, defaming. You know, so really, it's like being having a bad reputation. And our people do have a bad reputation because of how they carry themselves in this world prior to this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But now that we have uh, been allowed to receive this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and wake up and come out of that dusty ass state that we were in, now it's a problem. All right? Which it has always been a problem. This isn't the first time you go back to the book of Ezra, you know, you go to the book of Nehemiah. You know, you go to the book of uh, First Ezra within the scriptures. And any time that our people try to establish themselves and, and, and shake themselves from a condition that they were in, they've always been by the other nations knocked back into that position or, or at least attempted to knock back into that position because they hate to see us glorified. All right, they hate to see us on our best behavior, on our P's and Q's, because they're afraid that the Heavenly Father will deal with us. So what's the difference now? All right, they're afraid. But however, the way that they act towards us, you know, in, in uh, uh, forcing us into this box, you know, as I have been saying, 
you know, only signifies one thing that we are taking up in the lips of the people as an infamia. And also, we have become proverbs and bywords. So what they're doing is a fulfillment of the scriptures, and it only further shows that we are the true Israelites. All right, I was watching, you know, the uh, apostle, the apostle, the apostles and elders, okay, uh, apostle Tahar and apostle Aramla videos concerning, uh, um, concerning uh, vocab Malone Salaki. I kind of had a bit brain freeze for a second concerning uh, vocab Malone. And basically, um, the situation with Tucker Carlson coming up to the camp and vocab called himself going over the scriptures, which you horribly represented the scriptures, and you're going to pay for that, you know, for breaking the scriptures down wrong and teaching many people. See, the time is going to come when Yahawashai is going to uh, uh, show himself upon the earth. And when he show himself, all right, he's going to be a so-called Negro man are uh, with an, uh, an afro that looks like wool, according to what the scriptures identify him as. It's a proud statement of you to make to say that his identity isn't in the scriptures or to alter his identity from what the scriptures are saying when it's, when it's a very plain thing. All right, what you read in the book of Revelation, what you read in the book of Daniel the 10th chapter, all right, are all color scriptures. The Heavenly Father gave his identity. He knew that you devils were going to set up a false image, you know, uh, in, uh, uh, of, a, of a, a demon impersonating him, which is Cesare Borgia. All right, the, the image that you see when you look up the name Jesus Christ, which is complete and utter blasphemy. But it's okay, because we're here to set the record straight through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and the elect is going to believe the truth. All right, and the elect is a small number. So it doesn't matter if everybody else don't get it. It doesn't matter if vocab alone doesn't get it. It doesn't matter if Dr. James uh, White doesn't get it. It doesn't matter if, you know, uh, um, anyone else doesn't get it dr brown the true depiction of our lord is in the scriptures and he said he that uh, uh believe believeth upon him as the scripture saith." all right in which you refuse to do it now the time is going to come when there's going to be a bunch of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that are being saved, and it's going to flip you out. It's going to F you up in your mind because these people that were taken up in the lips of talkers for infamy and also these individuals, you know, that were the bywords and the proverbs, they were the low. All right, the people of the box, that is, are the ones that can't step out of the mindset of being a, 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 a niggas. All right, they have to be niggas, or they have to be this particular image. They have to be a thug. All right, they have to be gangsters. They have to be basketball players. They have to be football players. That's the reason why you Edomites came up with the the uh the the idiom shut up and dribble. All right, because there's a box that you created for us, and basically you want to force us inside of that box. But our personalities, you know, our character, our spirit, is too big to be forced into a box. We are the heavenly Father's chosen people. We are the salt of the earth. And what's happening amongst our nation is bigger than you. Even though you hate it and you can't stomach it. 
all right, in regards to all you other nations. It's bigger than you. What's happening amongst these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that are waking up and turning back into Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, is bigger than you. You can't stop this. You can't hinder it. Although you go to great limbs to try. Because this is bigger than you. So the time is going to come when these people that you hate, that you defame, that you slander, that you bring up evil reports on, are going to be delivered by the one all right, that you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, but his true name is Yahawashai and is a dark-skinned man. And when you see it, it's going to fuck you up. You're going to say, how, how are these niggas numbered amongst, you know, the sons of God? They ain't nothing. And that's the way you look at us, like we're not nothing. But we are the sons of the Heavenly Father. The book of Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. Aren't we doing that? We're standing in great boldness against such as have afflicted us. Do you see any small hatters out on the street are prophesying and breaking down the scriptures? And the answer is no. They're not standing in great boldness against such as have afflicted them. The scriptures say, shake the hand, go into the gates of the noble. We all up in the elite face with this truth. Why do you think they formed the Anti-Defamation League? Why do you think they formed all of these other programs, this Southern Poverty Law Center? Why do you think they hired your ass, vocab? And made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all they look for. Because they're looking for white Christians to be raptured. They're looking for everybody that turned to Jesus Christ to be raptured. And that a, a white man is going to do it. But guess what? It's going to only be the elect of the nation of Israel. Now, although Israel is very different colors at this moment. All right. A so-called Negro Lord who's superior to you and that funky ass image that you created in him and the heavenly father to make them look white. He's going to be a dark skinned man with the, with the white woolly beard, angry. And when we get on those ships, our bodies are going to be changed. And guess what? We're going to be dark skinned people. Some of us are light skinned. But we're going to be dark skinned with those new bodies. But this is this is beyond what you look for. This ain't what you anticipate. This ain't what Catholic, Catholicism taught. This ain't what Christianity taught. This is something far different. It says, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this is he who we had some time in derision in a proverb of reproach so basically look you 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 are the niggas all right you you so-called negroes latinos and native americans all right and i'm just narrating all right as as them now they may not come out and say this directly but look this is your box why are you leaving your box you're supposed to just be the niggas and that's it You're supposed to be this image that we've created of you, that we pushed of you on the world. Why are you not performing, you know, uh, 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 and tap dancing? Why aren't you shucking and jiving? Because we are the sons of the Heavenly Father. We are kings and priests. 
And everything that we have been on this side is contrary to what we're supposed to be. We are gods. We have not been behaving ourselves as such, as the sons of God. We lost our ways, but guess what? As the prodigal son returned. Reading on, it says, We fools counted his life madness in the end to be without honor. How is he numbered amongst the children of God and his lot among the saints, in which the saints, all of the saints are Israelites? Even King David told you that. Psalms 148 and 14. So it's going it's, it's going to fuck them up that we are numbered amongst the sons of the heavenly father. Now, I want to go to first Sam, uh, first Samuel, the 16th chapter, verse 11, real fast. And we're going to um, take a look at the NLT as well as the KJV. And basically. Uh, dealing with the identity and the look of, of our king, King David. So this is 1 Samuel 16 and 11. Samuel said unto Jesse, uh, are, are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. So this is around the time when King Saul was rejected from being king and the heavenly father was about to anoint King David. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and with all a beautiful of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And Yahweh said, arise, anoint him for he uh, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of Yahweh came upon David for that uh, from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now, when you read the same uh, verses within the NLT, it reads this, in which I'm just going to focus on verse 11. I read a little bit further down to show you that it was speaking about King David. So this is verse 11 in the NLT. Then Samuel asks, are these all the son, uh, sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse replied, but he's out in the field watching the sheep and goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. In Salaki, I'm going to read verse 12 as well in the NLT. So Jesse sent for for him he was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes and yahweh said this is the one anoint him so they don't just make a mistake like that so in replace of ready they they use in the nlt dark but why would they do that now i'm going to show you how much of a devil these devils be deviling when you go into the word ready The word ready is uh, uh, damnaya, but they'll try to make it seem as if this word is uh, um, goes back to uh, Edom, which is red, right? This isn't the word for red. This isn't how you say red within the scriptures. It's not damnaya. That's not how you say red. The way that you say red according to the scriptures is this right here. And we're going to the book of Genesis, the 25th chapter, and the 25th verse. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. All right, they called his, his name Esau, which I'm going to deal with Esau as well. All right, and what Esau means and this is how you're able to identify uh, uh, who Esau is today. Now, when you go to the word red, it says Adam Naya, right? But that's not the way that you say red. We're going to prove that. 
So as you can see right here, I'm going I'm to just highlight it. It says Adam Naya. That's not how you say the word red. See, we're going we're gonna to correct their Hebrew because the spirit and power has been given back unto us to receive this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So we're going to correct this. Now, as you can see, it says from the root, which is Adam. Okay, Adam. That's not how you say red. All right, let's get the true way of how you say red. We're going to jump down to verse 30. It says, And Esau said unto Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Now, right here where it says Edom, they still spell it Adam. And that's because they're trying to make a connection all right, uh, with themselves as the, the, the holy people, but they're not. Let's correct this. Right here where you see Strong's definition, and it says Edom, or fully Adam. All right, you can barely see it, but it's right there. You have the I, you have the die, you have the Y, and you have the Ma. That is the correct way to say Edom. That is the correct way to say red. Let's read uh, Genesis 25 and 30 again. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. For I am faint, therefore was his name called Edom. So the correct way to say red will be Adawam. Now, the name Esau uh, is actually Aishashua. And the reason why he was named that is because he was consumed when he came from the womb. <laughs> I like the way that sound. Consumed when he came from the womb. I believe there's a... a um, a precept that allows you to look up the word consumed. Yeah, this is the book of uh, Psalms, the sixth chapter and the, the seventh verse. It says, my eye is consumed because of grief. It waxeth old because of all my enemies. Now, when you go into this word for consume, the word there is Aishash. All right, Aishash. But Esau's name is Aishashwa. Now, this will be the root of Esau's name, which means to waste away, to fail, all right, to be consumed. Because when Esau was born, he didn't have any pigment, all right? He didn't have any color, all right, within his, his uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to say he didn't have any color. Because he did have color, but the color was red because his blood showed forth through his skin. So he called him Aishashwa. All right, that's what our forefather Isaac called Esau when he was born. He called him Aishashua. Now, go, going back and dealing with the word uh, ready within the book of 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, in verse 12, when you go into the word ready, remember the word there was Adam Naya. Adam Naya. All right. But it, it says, when you read it in the Hebrew text, it says, Adam Wanaya. That's not how you say Edom. Remember, Edom is, is similar, it's close, but you would have to flip the, the Ma and the Wa, all right, to make it Adam Wanaya, okay? So that's not Edom right there. What that is, is Adama, and that's the reason why in the MLT, uh, in the NLT, they use the word dark. They use the word dark because what's dark? What's dark is the color of the, the, the top soil of the earth, the richest soil. Now, although David was youthful, you know, and is in, in, you know, there's a certain texture of being dark skinned when, when your your blood does show forth through your skin. All right. David was a young and handsome 
men. All right, he was he was goodly to look upon as as a, as the scriptures say. So he was he was good looking. He was a good looking young young man. All right, and, and he looked youthful, and and sometimes you know, there's a, uh, a a hue of the skin, you know, where the blood does show forth, you know, a little bit, even though you're dark skin. You know, there's even horses that are dark brown, but but they have like a red undertone. When you go into Genesis, the 25th chapter, verse 30, it says that Esau said to Jacob, feed me. I, I'm sorry, not 25 and 30. Genesis 2 and 7. It says in Yahweh power for men of the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils are the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Now, when you go into the word ground here, the word there in the Hebrew is Adama. So let's do that. The book of Genesis 2, verse 7. And we're looking up the word ground, which is H127. The word there is Ha Adama. All right, but when you look it up, it's just Adama. So this is the name of Adam. And when the Heavenly Father formed man of the ground, he didn't just form one man singular. All right, he, he formed uh, many men and many women. All right, many men, many, 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 many men. But when you look up the word Adama, the word there is ground, all right, land. So even Adam, all right, and the, those that they were called the antediluvians, all right, the people before the flood, they were dark skinned. It wasn't until, you know, Cain, Hoas came on the scene that uh, a, a, a man was, uh, became, you know, another complexion. And the Heavenly Father did that to set a mark upon Cain to curse him, okay? And if you can receive it, Cain will be Esau Edom coming back in the reincarnation. And that is the way, reason why his pigment was wasted away. The same mark that was put upon Cain was put upon Esau Edom. All right. And it fell on Cain's descendants. And it also fell on Esau's descendants. So Genesis 4 and 10. And he said, what has thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood uh, cried unto me from the ground. So this is after Cain slew his brothers Abel. And now art thou cur cursed from the earth, which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength, a fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And that describes even the so-called white man today. He's a fugitive from justice. He's even going to go as far as to hide from Yahweh Shai and the angels saying, let the rocks fall upon us, but yet not repenting of their murders, of their witchcraft, of their evil. All right. That's what a fugitive do. A fugitive flee from justice and don't repent from the wicked shit that they did. So reading on, it says, and Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from the face shall I be hid and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth and shall come and shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And Yahweh said unto him, therefore, uh, therefore, whosoever slave Cain, vengeance shall be uh, taken on him sevenfold. And Yahweh set a mark upon Cain lest any finding him should kill him. So that mark that was set upon Cain was his pigment being taken away. That's the reason why in verse 11, it says, now art thou cursed from the earth because you will be uh, um, being a dark skinned man. You would now have the mark all right, of being uh, wasted away, being consumed. All right, he made Cain a clean leper. Now, going back and touching on the name Adama, when you go to the book of Genesis 2 and 19, 
Uh, it says, and out of the ground, Yahweh formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Now these devils are so slick that when you go into Genesis 2 and 19 and you look up the name Adam, they have the same name there that they're trying to use for Edom because they're trying to make it seem as if Adam was a red man. But that's not so. Okay? When you go into the scriptures, the way that you would pronounce uh, um, Adam's name should be Adama. All right? Because he was formed from the ground. All right? But the word there should be Adama. And I'm going to show you. So when you go into Adam, which is the same word uh, that they're trying to use for the name Edom. All right? Or, the, or Ruddy should actually be Adama. So... The proof of that is in the book of Joshua 19 and 36. Even though this is speaking of a different person, they, he shares the same name as Adam. It says in Adama and Ramah and Hazar, Hazor. So let me get that for you so that you can see it. So getting that so that you can see it within the Hebrew, you see up here where it says Wa Adama, right here. All right. Adama, the word the word Wa means and Adama. This is the correct way that you would spell all right uh, um, Adam's name. So H one twenty eight Adama. As it appears right here, Adama, which means the earth, all right, or the ground, simply to put it. So the color of the ground is what? The color of the ground is brown. So that's the reason why in the NLT, when you go into the book of 1 Kings, the 16th chapter, verse 12 in the NLT, instead of saying ready, for King David, it says that he was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And Yahweh said, this is the one anoint him. All right. It, it, it doesn't fit your paradigm. It doesn't fit your realm of belief for these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans all right, to be the chosen people and to at some point have been a dark-skinned people. All right, we can never bow to these 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 niggers. You know, that's how you feel. They can never be over us. And even though you don't come out and say it, your action proves that it makes you cringe at the idea of us being superior and you being inferior. Especially with the mentality that we have, we got a ruling class mentality. All right, we ain't like all of these 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 other you know, uh, jive turkeys. All right, that you basically get. We ain't the Tyrones, man. All right. They cloned Tyrone. That was a heavy movie. Because basically in every city all over the United States of America, they have gotten you niggas to imitate a particular image. So hell yeah, they cloned you. You got niggas walking around with dreadlocks. All right. Uh, um, if they ain't got dreadlocks and lying up, smoking black and mouse with the same mentality, doing the same shit, talking about the same shit. Yeah, they cloned you niggas. They made all of you act alike. But guess what? If it were at all possible, they would be able to deceive the elect. They can't deceive the elect. The Book of Songs of Solomon 1 and 5, I am black but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Now, there was an, a, a, a certain time when you can go to the word Kedar, and it would say dark skin. They even took that out of there. 
It will literally say dark skin. They took that out of there. But it does say black skin. All right, it does say, uh, um, you know, black. But however, there's no such thing as a black person. So there are dark skinned people. And even the tents of, even Kadar was, was a dark skinned people, which comes from, uh, um, Salaki, which comes from uh, Ishmael. Genesis um, 25 and 13. It says, and these are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names, according to their generation. The firstborn of Ishmael is Nabajoth and Kadar in Abiel in uh, Mipsum. Now, when you go into the name Kadar, it's really Kadar, and it says dark. See? Dark. Because they were dark-skinned people. All right. Um, when you go down to the proper name of the people, it says swarthy swarthy so even king solomon was a swarthy complexion now i got something real fast um this is from the memoirs of the secret services of john mackey all right esquire during the the, the reign of king william queen anne and king george and this is how they depict you know a certain jew in this book all right. It says he hath also the exterior of it's a lucky this English is a little hard to read, you know. Uh I don't know exactly what that says, but reading on it says in his habit and manners, very formal, a tall, thin, I'm gonna read what I can read. A tall, thin, very black man, like a Spaniard or um, a Jew or Jew, about 50 years old. And then you go into other places. Um, this is from the race of men. OK. And basically it's given the, the physiognomy. <laughs> The way that the faces of the Jews look when you go into physiognomy is dealing with the look of a person's face. It says, when swarthy, as is often is. Hold on, wait, let me let me uh look at read this again. Let me read it again. It says, um, let me go up here. It says connecting. It says connecting them possibly with others so that this is not peculiar to the Jewish race. So this is who it's talking about. It's talking about, you know, the the, the how the the true Jews looked back then. OK. It says the brow and the nose at two from single convex line. The nose is comparatively narrow at the base the eyes consequently approaching each other lips very full mouth projecting chin chin small the whole physiognomy when swarthy as it often is has an african look and what does the scripture say are thou not like the ethiopian unto me the word ethiopian comes from the greek ayatiyak which means burnt face they call them that for being dark skinned so the children of Israel, the true children of Israel were a dark skinned people. All right. Even King Solomon and King David was dark skinned. And who stemmed from their lineage? Our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Now, this is Songs of Solomon 5 and 11. It said his head is, uh, is the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. So what are locks? First of all, locks are braids. It says that they are bushy. In black as a raven. 
So who has bushy locks, bushy braids that are black as a raven with dark skin? All right. So these are the forefathers of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. So at the end of the day, the day got to end. Just being silly, but our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, was a dark skinned man. All right, point blank, period. All right, the, 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 all of the, the, the people that they call the Jews were dark skinned people. Okay, at some point in time, but however, all right, our people were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. They had children with women of other nations. So now they look like other nations as well. But however, you have to be an Israelite to receive salvation. All right, all of these people that you look not for to be the true Israelites are right, in the place of their captivity. All right, they shall be called the sons of God. All right, we are being made manifest as the sons of God. And it's going to be us that get delivered. And it's going to break y'all little hearts when it is. But however, don't worry. All right. You won't have long no more because the Lord is going to take y'all ass out. And when you come back in the reincarnation as slavery, all of these beautiful dark skinned people is going to be ruling over your ass and putting their foots up your ass. So with that, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying until the next time. Shalom.